This morning, the results continue to come in from New York's 10th Congressional District, NBC News, categorizing the race at this moment as too close to call with former Democratic impeachment lawyer Dan Goldman holding a narrow lead over New York State Assembly member Yulin Nayu. In third place is incumbent Mondaire Jones, who was elected to the 17th District in 2020 before redistricting turned it into what is now the 10th District. Goldman declared victory last night, shortly after the Associated Press called the race for him and Dan Goldman joins us now. Dan, we haven't called it yet, but a lot of other people have, so I'll hold off on the congratulations, but it looks good for you, fair to say. Uh, this is your first step into politics. Um, what did you learn out of the campaign trail for all these months? Well, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from the voters. Um, that was far and away the best part, was getting out on the trail and talking to the voters, understanding the issues that affect them locally, nationally, and it was uh, validating in many respects the, both the result last night but also talking to the voters about the degree to which they are really concerned about the state of our democracy. And I know you guys just had a long conversation with uh, Barb McQuaid and Josh Dawsey about Mar-a-Lago, but these, the, the voters who understand that Donald Trump is still around, is still likely to run, I think almost certainly to run in 2024, and if he is running because it's his criminal defense strategy, what do you think he's going to do with the 2024 election, given what he did when he wasn't running away from DOJ in 2020? So the voters do understand that, and um, I think that there's a lot of work for uh, those in Congress to be a bulwark against that. And it's going to take Republicans, too. And they're going to have to step up and recognize that our democracy is on the line. It's interesting you say that because we've been reporting this week that some Democrats are finding that not to be necessarily a resonant message because their goods and services cost too much and they're worried about crime in New York City. How much did you hear about crime? How much did you hear about inflation versus democracy? Public safety in New York City is a huge issue in almost every neighborhood uh, that I went to. And hate crimes are significantly on the rise, in, especially in Asian American communities and Jewish communities. Um, and so there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, as you guys know from me having been here, I was, been, I was a federal prosecutor here in New York City for 10 years. Um, and I am looking forward to digging in with a lot of my friends, former colleagues uh, in the city to figure out a way that we can both reduce incarceration, make the system more fair, but also make sure that the city is safe. It is the key to so much of the revitalization, not only in New York City, but around the country. So, so Deanne, in terms of public safety, in terms of people's concerns about public safety, this is a two-part question. One, uh, it's almost always focused, at least from, to my ear, on the subway. You know, what happens in the subways? How do we get to work? Do I take my children on the subway? That's one issue. The other issue is sort of connected to it, but it's the dangers to democracy, the larger dangers to democracy. One, what do you do about public safety, subway stuff? And two, what do people say when they, to you when they articulate the dangers to democracy in their minds? How do, they, how do they articulate it? Both are critical questions, and I talked a lot about that with voters over the last three months. On the public safety issue, there are a lot of people I spoke to who say they don't take the subway anymore. And that is debilitating to the city's economy. If people are not taking mass transportation, they're going to continue to work remotely, and the city is going to struggle to revitalize the economy. But <clears throat> this is where I, I do think um, perception of public safety matters almost as much as the data. And I say that because you can have one arbitrary shooting on the subway, as we had, and then Everybody is scared that the next one will be them. It's why terrorism works. And it's different if you're having a fight among people who know each other and, and then there's a shooting. That just feels different to everybody. So I, I do think one of the things that we are really going to have to focus on uh, in this city more broadly is addressing the homeless problem. I mean, part of the subway issues is just based on the increase in homelessness and post-COVID, more people being in, in uh, more people being unhoused and needing to make sure that we transition people into more affordable housing and address the homeless problem. And I think once we do that, 
and we remove people from the subways and put them in shelters, I think that we'll start to feel a lot better. Dan, this was a tight primary, and the results are probably going to come out in your favor pretty soon officially. Do you think that Donald Trump inserting himself at the last minute on your behalf of sorts? I don't know whether it was an endorsement or an attack, whatever it was, but he decided to insert himself. Do you think that that helped you with voters in New York City? You know, it's hard to say. <clears throat> he first attacked me, and then he came out with his, you know, fake endorsement. Um, hard to believe that, you know, the person who I led the impeachment of was, you know, actually genuinely wanting me to win. I think what everybody recognized, it was his effort for reverse psychology. Um, but I think what it shows is how much of a factor he still is in our politics, right? When that happened, all of a sudden, everyone was paying attention. I think, you know, some of my opponents miscalculated a little by assuming that it was real and asserting it was real. But he is so much a part of even a Democratic primary in New York City. He's a part of everything. And to the second part of your question, Mike, <clears throat> that is on everybody's mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it is critically important that we address the threats that he poses. And it's not just Trump, it's Trumpism. It is the fact that the House Republicans are under his thumb and they remain under his thumb. And what I am as scared about is that not just that Donald Trump will do something crazy in 24, of course he will, he always does, but the problem is that he has complicit members in the Republican Party in the House they're going to have to, at some point, have a reckoning as to what kind of country they want and whether they're just going to stand up and say, OK, this is just we just can't tolerate this anymore. There have been a dozen instances where we would have expected that to happen. It hasn't yet, but it w remains to be seen. For people who may have missed it, Donald Trump gave a sarcastic endorsement that end with Dan Goldman has a wonderful future ahead. And it appears at least he's right about that. We will see. Uh, Dan Goldman, great to see you. Thanks for being here. We'll see much more of you, I'm sure. Thanks so much. Come